All right, in this video, I want to give you just enough linear algebra so that we'll be able to solve a system of differential equations. All right, so here we go. A couple things that we need, and these are kind of definitions and properties of matri matrices. Um, so let's start off with the definition of a vector. And a vector is a collection a collection of often numbers, but sometimes functions, sometimes variables, so we'll just put functions, etc. Um, and they are written as a column or a row. And if you guys are in Calc 3 or have taken Calc 3, then you've seen these. Um, so we could write, um, so here's an example, one, two, three. That is a column vector. We could write it as a row, one, two, three. Those are commas in between there. Um, we're going to be using x, y as a vector a lot because that's what our solution to the differential equation is. Um, we could even have derivatives in a vector. Um, all right, so that's a vector. A matrix is a collection of vectors. And so we could think of this as a collection of row vectors or a collection of column vectors. Um, notation for matrix matrices, often capital letters are used. Um, and then we often put like M cross N at the bottom of it. Um, and what this means is that there is going to be M rows and N columns in our matrix. Now a lot of times we're going to be dealing with two by two or three by three matrices, but let me just give you an example of a two by three matrix. So this is a matrix that's going to have two rows and three columns, and I'm going to put numbers in those. So there's first row, second row, and then I'm just randomly putting numbers in here. Eight square root of two, why not? All right, so here is an example of a two by three matrix. Now there are two special matrices that we need. These are called identity matrices. Or an identity matrix. So the identity is sort of the same as, we could think of this as multiplying by one. So I put this in quotes because matrix multiplication is a lot more complicated than just regular multiplication. But if we have like two times one, then we get two back again. And so identity matrix is essentially whatever matrix you could multiply by another matrix and get that same matrix back again. So often we use I for the identity matrix. And we're basically going to be dealing with just two by two and three by three matrices in this class. So the identity for a two by two is one, zero, zero, one. By the way, identity matrices are always square, meaning they have the same number of rows and columns. The identity matrix for a three by three is one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. Now, if we wanted something bigger, this would continue. So for a four by four, we would just have ones all the way down the diagonal and zeros elsewhere. All right, next we'll do some operations with vectors or matrices. Um, to add or subtract either a vector, which you may have already done that in calculus, um, or a matrix. This is pretty intuitive, um, and it's not adding or subtracting a matrix. It's adding or subtracting matrices. Um, what you want to do is add or subtract the components. Add or subtract components. All 
All right, and then another one that's fairly intuitive is if you multiply Sorry, my handwriting with this thing is sometimes really bad. If you multiply a vector or a matrix by um, a scalar, so that just means by like some number out in front, then what you do is multiply each component. All right, so let me do a couple of examples here. Um, so let's say that the matrix A is one, two, three, four, and that the matrix B is negative eight, six, five, zero. So if we wanna add these two matrices, so if we do A plus B, so that would be one, two, three, four, Four plus negative eight six five zero. What you want to do is add each one of the components. So we're going to add one and negative eight, and one and negative eight is going to give us negative seven. Then we're going to add two and six, so two plus six would be eight. Then we are going to add 3 and 5, so that would also give us 8. And then we are going to add 4 and 0, and so that would give us 4. So there's the resulting matrix. Um, now to multiply by a scalar, so let's say we want to do a minus 2 times b. So what we're gonna do in that case, I'm not gonna do this one really colorfully. One, two, three, four, there's A. Then we're gonna subtract two times the matrix B, so that was negative eight, six, five, and zero. So what we're gonna do is look at everything in the upper left-hand corner. We have a one, and then we need to take negative two and multiply that by that upper left-hand corner of B. So negative two times negative eight, that's plus 16. And I'll write the resultant matrix at the end over here. So that gives us 17 in that upper left-hand corner. Uh, let's go for the upper right corner. So we're gonna have two, and then negative two times six, is negative 12, so 2 minus 12 is negative 10. Now for the lower left, we have a 3 in A, and then a minus 2 times 5, so that's minus 10. 3 minus 10, that gives us negative 7 in the lower left. And then in the lower right, A has a 4, and then we've got negative 2 times 0, that's 0, so that just leaves us with 4. I want to do one other example of this, and that is taking a minus lambda, which is a random constant, times i, which is the identity for a. All right, so this is going to give us then, so we've got one, two, three, four, minus random constant lambda times the identity matrix. Now the identity matrix, we have to choose the appropriate sized one. Um, because this is a two by two matrix, we choose the two by two identity. That should be pretty intuitive. And so now the upper left hand corner, we're going to have one and then negative lambda times one is negative lambda. In the upper right hand corner, we're gonna have two and then negative lambda times zero is zero. So we add nothing, so we get just two. In the lower left, we have 3, and then negative lambda times 0, so we're adding nothing to 3. And then in the lower right, we have 4, and then negative lambda times 1, minus lambda. So notice that when we take a matrix and subtract lambda times the identity, what ends up happening is that we end up subtracting lambda down the diagonal. Um, put that in the back of your head. We're going to use that over and over again coming up here in the next section.
Okay, so we mo talked about multiplying by a scalar, but we haven't talked about what it means to multiply matrices. Now, for this section, we don't need matrix multiplication, but what we do need is how to multiply a matrix, a matrix and a vector. So I'm gonna do this with a couple of examples. Um, let me do a three by three. So one, two, three, four, zero, six, negative five, uh, negative two, and three. Okay, so there's a three by three matrix. And what I'm gonna do is multiply this by, um, let's go for, well, let's multiply by the vector one, two, three. All right, so now the first thing that I'm going to do is multiply the first row by that column. So what this looks like is taking one times one plus two times two plus three times three. So I'm multiplying kind of component wise here. Um, and I'm doing the, let me see if I can point here, the one and the one first multiplied together. Then I move over to the next spot, which is two and then two. And then I move to the next spot, three times three, and I add all of those things together. All right, and that gives me the top row or top entry in this resultant matrix, which was gonna be what, three times three is nine, plus four, plus one, so that looks like 14. All right, now for the next one, what I'm gonna do is take the second row and then multiply it by that column in the same manner. So first entry, four times one, the first entry of both, four times one plus uh, zero times two, those are the second entries in that row and column, plus six times three. All right, what do we get here? Six times three is 18, 18 plus four, looks like we got 22, because that two times zero is zero. All right, and then the next one, we're gonna do the same thing, except for, for the last column, I'm sorry, that's a row, the last row and the same column. Okay, so first entry is a negative five and then first entry one plus a negative two times two plus three times three. Okay, so it looks like we've got a five and a negative four, so that's negative nine and then a positive nine. So it looks like on this one we get zero. All right, so to multiply a matrix times a vector, you multiply the vector by each row. You can multiply component-wise um, and then add all of those resultant multiplications together. Um, all right, so let's, do, let's do another example. This one might be a little bit simpler. One, two, three, four. And let's multiply that by x, y. All right, so if we take the top row and then multiply it by that, uh, by that vector there, the first components are one and x, so we multiply those together and we get x. The second components are two and y, so that's two times y, and we add those together. And we can't simplify that because one's an x and one's a y, so it just stays as is. Now we're gonna do the bottom row with that column First component is three, first component is x, so multiply those together, three times x. The second component is four, the second component of the column vector is y, so four y, and we can't combine those together, so it stays as is. And this is the multiplication that we will be doing quite a bit of uh, when we look at the differential equations. All right, um, one more fun fact about matrices. And that is called the determinant.
So the determinant of a matrix, um, if we have a, um, by the way, the notation is either DET and then you put the matrix in there, or absolute value symbol is used. Um, if there's a matrix inside of that symbol, it means find the determinant. So this is just a property. Um, and so for a two by two, I'm gonna do this with some random components in there. So a determinant of a two by two is A times D minus C times B. So I think of this, I do everything with patterns. Um, so the pattern that I think of when I do this is that I multiply diagonally and then I subtract and I multiply up. So I kind of do this little swish or X looking thing. Um, A times D minus C times B. So and I just kind of remember the pattern of it. Um, now let's do a three by three and I'll use letters A, B, C. D, E, F, G, H, I. Remember cross product from Calc 2? Um, this is going to look very familiar. When you find the cross product, you are finding the determinant of a special matrix. So the first thing that gets written down is whatever is in the upper left hand corner. So that's an A times, now what we're going to do is ignore that row and ignore that column. Wait a second, we've done this in this class. I just did a video on this. What was that? The Ronskian. The Ronskian is also finding a determinant. Okay, so, um, sorry about that. All right, so we write down A. So we ignore that row and that column, and then we look at this lower right-hand corner and find the determinant of it. Now if we do this little X thing, that would be E times I minus H F. Write that down. So E I minus H F. The second component of a matrix or of a determinant of the three by three is always negative. In fact, if this is a four by four and you're finding the determinant, the sign always oscillates plus minus plus minus. Um, if you take a linear algebra class, why that happens will come out in that. Um, so we write down B, then we ignore the row and column that B is in, and that leaves us with this D, F, G, I. So I'm going to multiply down D, I minus G, F. And then add the last component of C in that first row. Then you ignore that row and column. We're left with these four. Uh, multiply down D, H, multiply up. G E. So this is going to be times D H minus G E. Right? And those are all going to be numbers and then you just do some multiplication and addition and um, and then uh, we're going to and then add all those together. All right, one more example here because this is really what we're going to be doing is finding the determinant of a matrix minus lambda I. So let's use the A from the last, um, the last slide, and I believe that was one, two, three, four. So when we subtracted lambda I, it subtracted lambda from the diagonal. Oops, that would be a four. So if we find the determinant of this, we would multiply down one minus lambda times four minus lambda minus multiplying up three times two so that would be minus six and we could simplify this a little bit uh, negative lambda times negative lambda is a lambda squared then we've got a minus four lambda and a minus one lambda so that would be minus five times lambda and then we've got four times one which is four minus six so it looks like that would be negative two. So we could simplify that. Um, so we're gonna over and over again here in the next day uh, be finding a minus lambda i and then taking the determinant of that.